Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. As I travel through this pilgrim land, there is a friend who walks with me. Kids and it is a brand of cavalry. This would be my prayer, Lord, each day to help me do the best I can. For I need the light to guide me day and night. Blessed Jesus, oh my. 
My beloved brothers and sisters all over the world, I greet you this morning in the awesome, the all-powerful name of Jesus. We are joining you another Sunday morning for divine worship from Mount Zion University, Hamilton Mountain, St. Mary, Jamaica. On behalf of our host, Pastor Reverend Bruce Farrell, and our associate, Pastor Reverend Dorothy of Gordon, we greet you warmly, especially the entire congregation of MZU, our families, our past members, our friends, and everyone tuning in this morning. Greetings and welcome. We sincerely hope that our service today will be a blessing for you. It's the third Sunday of March, and it's our youth's day, and the praise and worship team did a great job this morning. Indeed, my heart, and I hope your hearts were touched, were blessed this morning. We serve an awesome God. We serve a wonderful God. He's always victorious, always watching over us. He is the sovereign God, and as young people this morning, we stand resolute that no matter what darts the enemy throws at us, we are resolute. We're standing firm because we must make heaven our home. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Let us look to the Lord in prayer at this time. Most righteous and adorable Father, I exalt you this morning because you are the great I am. You are the way maker. You are the sovereign God. And there is no other God like Jehovah. And we stand in this sanctuary this morning to hail you as King of Kings, as Lord of Lords, the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. I pray this morning, God, that you make us worthy to stand in your presence, to give you praise, glory, and honor. You have been an excellent God. You have brought us a mighty long way, and our desire is just to continue to worship and serve you. I ask this morning, Lord, that you will take our service totally in charge. Whatever should be said and done today, Holy Father, I pray that it will be from your oracle. I pray for your man's servant that shall bring the words to your people today. I ask God for a double portion of your spirit. I ask that you will inspire him in such a way, God, so that as your word goes near, goes far, wherever, the corners of this earth, at the end of it all, men will be saved, Christians will be challenged, and more so, Lord, your word will go forward. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Remember all the young people of Jamaica, all the young people of the nation. Spirit of the living God, the devil is roaring up and about, seeking whom he may devour. But almighty God, we call on you this morning that you will take full control, almighty God. You will go before us, Jesus. Those of us that have surrendered to you, I ask, Lord, that you keep us in the faith. Keep us safe. Keep us in the fight. Because our main goal is to see your face. Father, those that are unsaved this morning, I pray a special prayer for them. You have called young people because we are strong, because we can do great exploits for you. I ask, Holy Father, that you will save them in time. 
Broad is the way that leads to destruction and many are heading that way. But Holy Ghost, I ask that you will make a way of escape for your people. Remember the beautiful island of Jamaica. Father, you have blessed us immensely with many resources. Father, but we have become recently a nation of blood, a nation of corruption. Lord, we see so many things that are not of you. But Spirit of the living God, I ask that you will go before us this morning. I pray, Lord, that you will send your divine power to everyone that would want to wreak havoc on this country. Spirit of the living God, I ask that you will touch the men and women hearts of Jamaica. Father God, do a work in their heart. Almighty God, we look to you for great and mighty blessings. Spirit of the living God, we call on you. Jehovah, we call on you. Jehovah, we call on you this morning because you are all powerful. Father, all powerful you are. And we know once as Christians, once we turn from our wicked ways, once we continue to pray, you will hear and you will heal our land. Spirit of the living God, I ask that you be with us for the balance of this service. Bless us, Lord, in all that we do at the end of it all. You will be praised and glorified. We give you thanks. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Today at MZU, we are quite privileged to have sharing with us the undiluted word of God, Reverend Elon Talmy. This young man is totally sold out to Jesus and preaches across boundaries, across denominations, with a vision to guide individuals into the fulfillment of their God-given purpose. He is happily married and a father of three. Our praise and worship team will be coming with a special song. After that, the next voice you will hear will be that of our speaker for today, Reverend Elon Talmy. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. It is indeed a privilege to be able to share the word of God with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Now, we serve the true and living God, and we know that the God that we serve is always worthy and deserving of all glory and honor and praise. And so I challenge you right now on whatever social media platform you might be viewing this broadcast at whatever time you may be viewing this broadcast can you just give god praise in the name of jesus understanding that once you condition your heart and your mind and you open your mouth to send the praise to the living god that you invite his presence into your atmosphere and can i declare to somebody that where the presence of the living god is things can never remain the same 
in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Whatever change it is that you desire, whatever breakthrough it is that you desire, all you need to do is send up glory and honor to the living God and receive your blessing and your breakthrough right now in the name of Jesus. You see, we need to understand the potency of our worship. Worship is not something that is to be taken lightly or to be taken for granted. You see, many things that occur in the natural is oftentimes a reflection of things that take place in the realm of the spirit. Take, for example, what we call the water cycle. You see, water evaporates from the earth and goes into the atmosphere. And then in the atmosphere, the water vapors then mix with dust particles and form clouds. Then after a period of time, the clouds then release that water back onto the earth in the form of rain or snow, which causes production to take place. Now, in the same way, in the realm of the spirit, when we send up our praises, our praise and our worship come from the realm of the earth, but it goes into the heavenlies, and in the heavenlies, our worship then mixes with the glory of God, and then sends back our blessings, our breakthroughs, our miracles that we need from the living God. I don't know what it is that you might be in need of right now but I declare to somebody in the name of Jesus that if you release yourself in worship heaven will open up and release your breakthrough in the name of Jesus there is no sickness that can prevail once you send up your worship and God releases his glory in the name of Jesus can somebody lift your hand right now right where you are in your atmosphere and re receive what heaven is releasing upon you in the name of Jesus Jesus, if it is a sickness that you're experiencing, receive your healing even now in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever the condition, whatever the situation, receive your breakthrough. Receive your miracle right now in the name of Jesus. There is somebody that for long, you have been praying, you have been fasting, you have been seeking the face of God and situations seem as if they have been getting worse instead of getting better. But hear the voice of of the living God right now. This is your day of change. This is your time of breakthrough. This is your season to receive your miracle. Can you condition your heart in the name of Jesus and receive it right now in Jesus' name? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the living God. We give glory and honor and praise to the living God in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. And we honor and exalt you and we proclaim that you are the mighty God and beside you there is absolutely no other in the name of Jesus. Glory and honor and praise the living God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I bless you all one more time in the name of Jesus coming to you from the MZU Church right here in Hamilton Mountain. And again, it is a blessing and privilege to share the living word of the living God with you. Now, when we look at everything that is taking place around us, right, uh, we see that the world right now is being driven by fear and confusion. And um, when we look at especially what is stemming from the whole COVID-19 situation, there are so many persons that are fearful right now of contracting the virus. There are persons that are fearful that the country might go into another phase of lockdown and it might be worse than the first. There are persons that are confused where the vaccine is concerned. Should I take it or should I not take it? Is, the, is it the mark of the beast or is it uh, something else? And so there is a lot of fear and confusion that is driving life as we know it right now. But one thing we understand is that in the midst of all the fear and in the midst of all the confusion and in the midst of all the change that has been taking place, that God is still the same. God has not changed. And the word of God declares to us, God himself said it. He says, I change not and with me there is no shadow of turning. And so the same God that existed before COVID, it's the same God that exists right now. His power has not subsided. Nothing about him has changed. And so we can have confidence in God that if he delivered before, he can deliver again. If he blessed before, he can bless again. If he, had, if he worked miracles before, he can work miracles again in the name of Jesus. We bless the true and living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we give glory to the living God. 
Now understand this, that in the midst of everything taking place, God is speaking. Amen? And the voice of God is saying something to us because with everything that is going on, it's not just the world that is affected, but the church has also been drafted into everything that is going on, all the fear and all the confusion. confusion. The church is also experiencing this. Amen? But God is speaking specifically to the church in this time. And if we listen keenly to the voice of God, we can hear what the living God is saying. Amen? Bless the name of Jesus. Now, what is it that the voice of God is saying? God is reminding us that we are the church. Come on, somebody. God is saying to us that we are not a, just a religious institution. The church was never established to be a religious institution. The church is the body of Christ. It is the entity established on earth to represent the true and living God. Amen? Now, one of the things that we understand from Scripture is that even though the church is on the earth, the church is by no means earthly. Amen? The church is a force that represents the kingdom of God. And therefore, there is no force on earth that can hinder the growth and the move of the body of Christ in this present time. Be it COVID or anything else, nothing can hinder the growth and the move of the body of Christ in this present time. We bless the name of the true and living God. Hallelujah. No. One of the other things that if we listen keenly to the voice of God, we hear God saying that the church is, first and foremost, a governmental institution. Now, before you switch from the broadcast, listen to what I'm saying. The church is, at first and foremost, a governmental institution. But the thing is that we do not represent an earthly government. We represent the government of the kingdom of God. No, 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 no. If you retrace the steps of Jesus Christ from uh, the, the, the time that he entered public ministry for the three and a half years that he did public ministry, we see him, according to scripture, when he was 30 years old, uh, being baptized by John the Baptist at the river of Jordan. Then the Bible says that as he came up out of the water, the, 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 the spirit of God came upon him in the form of a dove. And the voice came from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. He was being affirmed and confirmed by God himself. Now, the Bible says in the following chapter that he was led by the spirit of God into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil for 40 days and 40 nights. Now, follow the scriptures. The scripture says that when he came out of the wilderness, that he was full of the Holy Ghost. Watch this now. And the Bible says that he entered into the synagogues in the region of Judea. And he began to preach one thing. There was one topic that his sermon had. What was it? He was saying, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. No, 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 no. When you read all the parables and all the sermons that Jesus spoke, Everything that he did, everything that he said, centered around the kingdom of God. You jump over into Acts chapter 1. And in Acts chapter 1, this was immediately after he was resurrected from the dead. And the Bible says that he showed himself alive to his disciples for 40 days. And in that 40 day period, the scripture says that he showed himself alive by many infallible proofs. And the Bible also said that he taught the disciples the things concerning the kingdom of God. What was he doing in that 40 days period? He was training and preparing them to continue the work that he came on earth to begin. Now, when you go over into Acts chapter 2, the Bible says that uh, uh, the, the, the Holy Spirit was now released upon the disciples. Remember that uh, for the three and a half years that Jesus walked on earth, he was the only one that the Holy Spirit inhabited. The Bible says that he was full of the Holy Ghost. But here in Acts chapter 2, after he ascended, the scriptures now say that he released the same Holy Ghost upon the disciples. And that was where the church was birthed. Now, why was the church birthed at that time? The only purpose why the church was birthed was so that the work and the mandate that Jesus Christ started could have been continued. And so the purpose of the church was to continue the mandate that Jesus Christ came on earth to fulfill. What was that mandate? Go back with me to Matthew chapter 6. In Matthew chapter 6, the Bible says that uh, the disciples, uh, if, you, if you align it with um, the, 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 the corresponding scripture in the book of Luke, 
The Bible says that the disciples asked Jesus, teach us how to pray, just as how John taught his disciples. And so Jesus began to teach them how to pray, the same prayer that we know by heart from primary school that we call the Our Father Prayer. And he said, when you pray, say what? Our Father, who is where? He's in heaven. He's not on earth, he's in heaven. Hallowed or holy is your name. Then he says, your kingdom come and your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. That is the mandate of the church. To allow the kingdom of God to come and for the will of God to be done in earth just as though it takes place in heaven. And so the church is the entity established on earth as the governmental arm of the kingdom of God. To represent the kingdom of God here and to allow God's perfect will to be done in the earth. Come on, son. Somebody. And so for those who are a part of the body of Christ, understand that we are in governmental business, but the government that we represent is not on earth. We serve a higher government, which is the government of the kingdom of God. When you look at the word kingdom from the Greek, Jesus says, when you pray, say, our Father, what in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. The word kingdom comes from the Greek word basilia. The word basilia, when translated to English, it means dominion or rule or authority or power or governmental operation. Amen? And so that is where we get the, the, the concept from that we are here to represent the government of the kingdom of God. And once we effectively represent the government of God's kingdom, there is no force on earth that can hinder the move and the operation of the living God. Hallelujah. We have evidence enough from the Old Testament coming right down that there was no force or no power or no authority on earth that could stop the move of the living God in the earth. Come on, somebody, man. And my mind goes back to the time when Joshua was leading the children of Israel through the wilderness into the promised land. And the Bible says that they encountered one of the enemies. And the scripture says that this particular enemy came against them to destroy them. And Joshua prayed to God. Now watch this. The the Bible says that after Joshua prayed, that, 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 that God sent ambushments and wiped out a, a great portion of the army that came against them. But the army was not completely destroyed. No, 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 no. There was a concept that existed in that time. That once uh, the, the, the time was getting dark, once it was coming close to night, that they would pause the war until the next morning when you were able to see the opponent that you are fighting against. Now, when the Bible says that Joshua prayed and asked God, you have to understand that Joshua never wanted to continue the warfare tomorrow. Joshua wanted the warfare to end now. I don't know what you're going through, but I know that there's somebody right now listening to this broadcast that you're fed up of the warfare and you have decided in your heart that I will not go through one more day fighting this battle. This warfare has to end right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says that when Joshua prayed, God told him, you speak to the sun and you speak to the moon. Watch this now. The enemy was waiting until sundown so that they could recuperate and come back the next morning. But the Bible says when Joshua spoke to the sun and commanded it to stand still, that all all the look the enemy was looking. Come on, somebody. Night was not falling. The Bible says that the sun stood still for an entire day. It was two days in one. Why? Because the living God and his government had access in the realm of the earth. Can I declare to somebody that if you open your heart and open your mind and give the government of God's kingdom access into your situation, it must change in the name of Jesus. There's no way it can remain the same. And so we bless the awesome God right now. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. The church is not an entity that is not used to storms. Amen? And, uh, and normally we, 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 we label negative conditions as storms. The church is used to storms. The, 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 the church knows what it is to go through storms. From the very inception, as a matter of fact, going right back to the time of Jesus' birth, the enemy was trying to wipe out the establishment of the body of Christ from the time of the birth of Jesus. When you look at the command that, 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 that Herod gave to wipe out all the male children, he thought that Jesus would have been in the number. Come on, somebody. But the mighty hand of God was at work. And right through scripture, we find the enemy trying to shut down the growth of the church. But it could not work. Watch this now. The Bible speaks of a time in Acts chapter 12. 
it says that Herod stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. And so he went on to, 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 to kill James, the brother of John, with the edge of the sword. Now, the scripture says that when he saw that it pleased the Jews. No, no, no. These were people, you know, that should have been angry at the death of James. But the Bible says that when he saw that it pleased them, that he proceeded to take Peter also. But it was the days of unleavened bread, and so he could not kill Peter at the same time. So he entrusted or committed Peter to be locked up in prison. Watch this now. The Bible says that while Peter was in prison, there were four quaternions of soldiers that were set to guard him, or 16 soldiers in all that worked in shifts of four. So four on each shift for four hours each. No, 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 watch this. The Bible says that while Peter was in prison, the church was praying for him. No, understand this. The church was not at church praying for Peter. Because if you remember that, that was a time of persecution. And so they could not gather in the temple that was a place designated for worship. Come on, somebody, man. And there are so many persons that feel like, say, if church not keep, then not not go on. Come on, somebody, can I declare to you again that you are the church. Anywhere you are, the church is where you are in the name of Jesus. Watch this now. And so the Bible says that they were gathered at a particular house and they were mixed sending up prayers on behalf of Peter. Watch this. The scripture says that at midnight, round about midnight, that an angel entered where Peter was. No, no, Peter was not just thrown into any prison cell. Peter was thrown in the, in the inwardmost cell where he had to pass through several different gates to get to his cell. And the Bible says that all of a sudden an angel entered. No, the angel entered where Peter was without the knowledge of the soldiers. Come on, somebody. And watch it. Can I tell somebody right now? The enemy has been watching for somebody's demise. And God is granting you a breakthrough right in front of the enemy. And the enemy don't even realize it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Watch this now. Watch this. Watch this. The scripture says, that the, 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 the angel smote Peter and told him, wake up. No, no, no. I love this particular scripture. Because when you read it, you're saying, Peter knows that he's going to die tomorrow morning. And Peter asleep. How many times have you been through conditions and situations where, where, where just one JPS bill, come on somebody, or just one rent date coming up and you don't have the money yet. And for the entire night you can't sleep, you can't eat, you can't function. But here it was that Peter knew that he was supposed to die tomorrow morning. And Peter was asleep. Come on somebody man. Hallelujah. Watch this. Why? Peter had faith in the living God. Watch this. Where did Peter's faith come from? Peter understood that he was operating on behalf of God's kingdom. Do you remember when Jesus prayed for Peter? He says, I pray for you that your faith fail not. Come on, somebody. And he says, when you are converted, your job will be to strengthen the brethren. Now, Peter knew that after Jesus prayed that prayer for him, I can't die now because I still have some brethren to encourage. Come on, somebody. I still have some folks to strengthen. And so Peter knew that this was not my time to die. Come on, somebody. He knew that he had somebody with him that would cause him to live through what was supposed to be a death experience. And so Peter was able to rest as we say in the eye of the storm can, 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 can I just jump to another scripture and then I come back to Acts 12 watch this now it reminds me of a time when the Bible says that Jesus was, 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 was in a boat he told his disciples let us cross over to the other side now listen this it was Jesus himself that says let us cross over to the other side and the Bible says that Jesus was so tired that he fell asleep in the in the part of the boat now while he was there asleep the scripture says that a mighty storm arose to the point where the boat was now full of water and the disciples were fearful that they were going to be killed by the storm now understand this most of these disciples were fishermen which means that they were used to storms come on somebody storms were not something that they were not accustomed to uh, but, but, but here it was that this storm was so violent that even the fishermen that were used to it, come on somebody, it brought them to a place of fear that they thought they would have died. 
And the Bible says that they went where Jesus was sleeping. And when they woke him up, they said, Master, you don't care if we perish. When the Bible says that when Jesus got up, Jesus said, oh, you have little faith. No, 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 no. When I was growing up, I used to, I used to uh, be of the belief that Jesus was rebuking their faith because they should have been able to speak to the storm for themselves. But the more I look into the scriptures is the more I realize that that is not why Jesus was rebuking the level of their faith. Because if you remember up to that time in Matthew, that, that's in Matthew 8. Up to that time, they were not yet given power to speak to storms or to perform miracles. And so Jesus knew that they would not be able to speak to the storm. So why did he say to them, oh, you have little faith? Who was it that said to the disciples, let us go over to the other side? It was not Peter. It was Jesus. Come on, somebody. They were not yet to the other side and the storm came. Now, the reason why Jesus told them that their faith was small was that they knew that Jesus was in the boat. And as long as Jesus is in the boat, there is no way a storm could kill them. Come on, somebody. Because they have to get to the other side. And so Jesus said, your faith is little because I am with you and you're still afraid. Come on, somebody, man. Can I declare to somebody that Jesus Christ is with you in the boat in the midst of the storm and there is no need for you to fear in the name of Jesus hallelujah you have to get to the other side come hell or high water you have to get to the other side we bless the name of Jesus now back to Acts 12 watch this the scripture says that when Peter realized because up to that point he thought that it was a dream that he was in the angel brought him through the first gate, the second gate, the third gate, and he found himself in the middle of the road. And the Bible says that the angel disappeared from him, and he found himself standing in the road. He thought up to that point that it was a dream. But when he found that it was real, the Bible says that the first place he went was the place where the church was locked up in the house, sending up prayers on his behalf. Come on, somebody. No, 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 no. I want us to look at something here in the scriptures. In the same Acts chapter 12, if we look down to the end of it, now, if you remember, it was Herod that tried to kill Peter after killing John, right? That same Herod went to Caesarea, speaking to the people. And the scripture says that the people lauded him in such a way, but he failed to give God the glory. And because of that, he fell down dead and worms at his body. Watch this now. Look at verse 24 of Acts chapter 12. It says, but the word of God grew and multiplied. The same man that tried to stop the church, he died. And the word of God, the church of the living God, still continue to grow and to multiply. There is no force on earth that can stop the growth and the move of the church in the earth in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so no matter what kind of storm may come, come on somebody, you have to cross over to the other side because you have a mandate to represent the kingdom of God in the earth in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't know what it is that you might be facing now, what the nature of your storm is. There are so many persons going through different storms. And as a, as a matter of fact, one of the things that I've been looking at is that so many persons can go through the same storm, but face it in a different way. For some persons, the whole stop gone. For some persons, them lose every animal outside. For some persons, the entire house drop. It's the same storm, but different persons experience the effects of the storm in a different way. Come on, somebody. We are all facing the same storm. I don't know what effect it might be having on you right now, but I know somebody who has control over every storm right now, and his name is Jesus. Come on, somebody. And once you can hear his voice speaking to the wind and commanding the waves, then your victory is sure in the name of Jesus. Your victory is sure in the name of the living God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So what is God saying to you in the midst of all this? I believe the voice of God is saying to somebody right now that greater is on the other side of this. Greater is on the other side of this. You have to go through the storm now, but greater is on the other side of this. You have to go through the heartache now, but greater is on the other side of this. There is no wind of change that is ever calm. Come on, somebody. For, for, for there to be a wind of change, there has to be some turbulence. There has to be some kind of uproar, some kind of violence. But at the end of it, something greater 
is awaiting you. God is saying to the church that there is something greater at the end of this. Hallelujah. God is saying to somebody individually that there is something greater at the end of everything that you are faced with right now. There is something greater at the end of it. Can I ask you right where you are? In your home? On the road? Lift your faith. And if you can, lift your hands. In the name of Jesus. As we seek the face of the living God right now. The God who is able to speak to storms. Hallelujah. After Jesus commanded the waves to be calm. The Bible says the disciples remarked, what manner of man is this? That even the winds and the sea obey him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everything has to fall in obedience to the living God. Your conditions have to bow in obedience to the living God. Your needs have to bow in obedience to the living God. Your situation has to bow in obedience to the living God. And so we command everything challenging you right now to bow in the name of Jesus. We command everything facing you right now to bow in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So Father, we lift our hands to you right now in the name of Jesus Christ, your son. We proclaim your majesty. We proclaim your awesomeness. We proclaim your glory. We proclaim your sovereignty, mighty God. We proclaim that you are God all by yourself and beside you there is none other. We proclaim that you are the peace speaker, mighty God. We proclaim that peace comes from you, Jehovah Shalom. Mighty God, you are our peace. We proclaim that you are Jehovah Shammah, the God who is always with us, the God who is always near, the God who never leaves us destitute. We exalt your holy name even now, mighty God, the God who is always present with us in our conditions, in our situations, the God who never leaves us alone. Hallelujah. Omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent God. We give you glory and honor and praise right now in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, uh, we laud your awesomeness that even though listeners and viewers might be scattered all over the world, mighty God, in different countries, but your presence is right where they are even now, God. And so as your presence manifests and as you move, we pray for a shifting, mighty God, in their atmosphere even now. In the name of Jesus Christ, your son, as faith is lifted, mighty God, let there be a release from heaven even now. In the name of Jesus Christ, your son, blessed Father. Father, mighty God, there is somebody that their faith has been waning and wavering, mighty God, because of the storm that they are faced with. But in the name of Jesus, we declare that their faith shall not fail. In Jesus' name, Father, we speak breakthroughs even now. We speak miracles even now. In the name of Jesus, we declare deliverance even now. In the name of Jesus, we pray for a release of blessings and divine favors even now. We pray for a mighty move of the Holy Spirit even now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, your son. Father, we pray for the end result that was seen in Acts 12. That the word of God grew and multiplied. That that same end result will manifest right now, mighty God. In the name of Jesus Christ, your son, we call souls into your kingdom right now, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, your son. And for the souls that are already in your kingdom, blessed Father, we declare that their foundation is sure in the name of Jesus. And we pray for added strength in Jesus' name. And so, Father, we pray, let the church be the church. Let the church hear your voice in this time, mighty God. We pray, blessed Father, let your kingdom come. And let your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 God bless you in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. It was indeed an inspiring sermon today. And we give God thanks for Reverend Talmy. And I truly hope you were blessed. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. In darkest nights. You are close like no other.
us here at MZU, we say thank you for joining us this week for another worship service. We sincerely hope your hearts were blessed and that you were challenged to have a closer walk with the Lord. Do share your comments with us, and if you have a prayer request, please feel free to reach out to us. Our contact information will be in the description box below. From all of us here at MZU, until next week, have a blessed week. God bless you richly. <laughs>